Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2023 California Russell Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Roddy Smith. Um, I'm going to take uh, a little bit more longer, Anthony, sorry. I'm going to take Jim's extra minutes. For, I'm going to talk a little bit about Coach Halverson, too. Um, I want to first thank the Hall uh, for inducting me um, in this wonderful honor to also be inducted with my coach. Oh, man. I did not write a speech today. Please bear with me. I am a crier. Uh, yes, this big man is. Um, I want to first and foremost thank my wife uh, for all of her sacrifice that she's done. Uh, my little two-year-old boy Cooper that is at home and is asleep, thank goodness, so we get a night out. Um, my village, uh, my father, my hero, uh, thank you. This would never, this wouldn't be a, a thing without you. My mom, who has sacrificed so much for us. Uh, when me and my dad didn't, <laughs> we would go to tournaments and people would ask me, uh, do you have a mom? Uh, I'd be like, yes, she's at home with my sisters because they only saw my dad. Uh, but we went everywhere around this country, around this state, um, up and down, um, and around the world. Uh, I, I wouldn't be here because my, I got into wrestling due to a fluke. My dad was a football coach. He was an amazing coach. His football players lost their wrestling coach, and they said, hey, coach, will you coach us? And he said, sure. <laughs> he goes, I have never wrestled a day in my life, but I will, I will coach you. I ended up rolling around on mats, and they said, you should get him into wrestling. That's how it happened. Now I'm here talking to you. I started my wrestling career at San Juan Valley High School, and uh, but it, it excelled when I went to the Community Youth Center, actually, sorry, the Concord Youth Center in Concord, California, where I met a man named Bill Martell. Bill Martell never told me no. My Olympic dreams started in 1996 when I walked into his office and saw Matt Cafari with a silver medal around his neck and said, hey coach, I wanna do that one day. He goes, Robbie, if you can dream it, you can do it. It's gonna take a lot of work, but you can do it. I said, thanks, coach. <laughs> Left the room. <laughs> Didn't really understand at that time, but that's when my Olympic dream started. I went then, in every day of my life, all I cared about was one day becoming an Olympian, an Olympic champion. I trained very hard every day of my life, but in a style not many people love, <laughs> in a style that I love to grow in Greco Roman wrestling. I got to tell people for a very long time of my life that I get to choke people out and throw people on their heads. There's nothing better to do. And then I also got to tell them I get to wrestle men in sweaty spandex, and they always laughed at that one, too. I, um, I had the pleasure to have men around me my whole life to never tell me you cannot achieve what you dream. Mark Halverson was one of those men. He was a man in my life that was a father to me. I will never forget him. He will never be forget, forgotten. Coach traveled the world with me. He was selfish with me. I was his kid. He was my dad on the road. My dad was gracious to let him be his son. We, the day they asked me, uh, Robbie, who do you want to be your Olympic coach? There was no further answer than Mark Halverson. I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but what he did was he donated all of his time to the youth at the Community Youth Center, but then also donated a ton of time to the senior level athletes and was a three-time, four-time world team coach and Olympic coach. And people didn't understand. He didn't brag about himself. He didn't do anything like that. He deserved it because he put in the work for it. He was a man of honor, a man of integrity, and a man that made good humans. What I loved most about him was he saw in the youth that many people did not. The people that were like me, a tiny, fat little doughboy, 
who had learning disabilities wear funny socks to this day and said, I want to be an Olympic champion. He said, Robbie, if you can dream it, you can do it. He made good humans, and hopefully I am. I have to also thank the, my community around me. I have to thank my, one of my brothers, Steve Gee. We now get to run the, tra uh, the center together. We get to keep Coach's legacy rolling. Me and him took it over in 21 when it was down after COVID and we lost our father. Now we're back up to almost 300 athletes, 100 high school students, uh, 100 and 200 youth students. We have now added a women's program with 36 women in our program, just in high school uh, women athletes. And now we also have around, I want to say another 20 youth women, uh, girl athletes that wrestle up to CYC now. We're only doing this to help keep what we were given, built by Bill Martell, given to Mark Halverson, and us to take over. I also have to thank my friends and family who all are here tonight for supporting me and everything I've done. I have brothers that have been behind me. I don't have any brothers in my life. I have two older sisters. They're not here tonight. I wish they were. I thank them too. So if they're on the camera, call me and Crystal. Thank you. But uh, Jeff, Matt are here, and they've always supported me and guided me through my, my career when I went through the hard times. Our women's coach, Melinda Ripley, is here. She's hopped on with us and has given us a boost. But I also have to thank men like Roberto Dixon, Rob Valario, Dwayne Morgan for also believing in us and giving us a chance because this is all due to one thing, and that's becoming the best human you could possibly be. When you're surrounded by good humans, it's very easy to become one. So hopefully, I got asked the question earlier today, what do you want to be remembered of as? I said, I want to be remembered as a good human, not a good wrestler. That means I did my part in my life. Thank you very much, and have a great night. <laughs>